Mm -hmm. And 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 I know that that all start. I, you know, we all know and believe, especially I do, that the work really starts inner always. Yeah. And so, from a physical standpoint, I wanted to put health as my priority. So I have been completely vegan for the last two weeks. Right. Um, started taking herbs to replenish and cleanse my blood and my right. organs. So mm -hmm. I've been feeling really energized in that way. So I would say to anyone out there, really take a look at your health. Mm. and really start there because I, I truly feel that your body responds to whatever you give it. Greetings, my name is Queen Afua. I help people to live a healthy life in body, mind, and spirit. Welcome into the Sacred Circle where you will find peace, inspiration, and practical tools for living a happy, wellness lifestyle. So come inside and make yourself at home. And it kills me to know how much I really love you. <laughs> wow. oh, oh. That, that heart music work, your voice, your tone, your spirit, your life, your story, it hit my spine. It went up to the right and left brain. It's still going. It's like electricity. Open me up to some deep healing right here and now. Thank you. So, no one, what, what, you, please tell us about you. I, I'm jumping on that song because we all, the heart, everybody stopped the heart for a minute because they went into a trance. <laughs> <laughs> they said, what, is that song about me? Right. No, but but I'll tell you, the, the man at the time knows who that it was about him. And it was uh it was actually a very healing record for me. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, when when I did it kills me, I came into the music industry and it was a time where it was very it was very pop R and B driven. It was a lot of up tempo music. And I did that song with an amazing producer and songwriter by the name of Andrea Martin, who's also of the same Caribbean background as me. And we met and we just had amazing chemistry in the studio. And we did this song together. And when it came out to radio, it was such a huge success. And yes. more so than expecting or have no, having no expect expectations of if anyone would even like the song or know mm. the song, it became such a, a message of healing for everybody. Yes. And when I started to go around and I was singing this song and I was singing these like big love ballads, women and men all around were just like, this is my song, this is my song. And it, it just really, it, it really gave me purpose in that moment because I realized that it was bigger than music. Mm. I realized that it wasn't just about living out a dream of being a singer, but it was about bringing healing and bringing people together. And that through my stories and through my voice and me being the vessel that I could bring healing to other people so that mm. they didn't feel so isolated. Yes. that these songs would give them the words that they couldn't find within themselves to say. And yes. so that became purpose for me. And I actually tattooed Live on Purpose after that yes. um, because I realized that it, was, it wasn't just entertainment. This was, was, was purpose-driven work. They call, they call that entertainment. Yes, entertainment. Yes. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say it is so, it's such an honor to be speaking with you and to connect with you today. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, thank you. I'm going to call you. Thank you, healer. When you take your art and it becomes medicine and it transforms lives and allows one to cry out, to release, to overcome, to heal through our stories, I would say that you're that medicine woman of music and heart. Thank you. Yeah, so... Tell me what led you to that song. That has got to be a, a life transformation that happened within that song. Break it down for us. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you a few things. I'm going to take it all the way back to okay. when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. So when I was four years old and they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I said I wanted to be a singing nurse. And it's very interesting because throughout my life, you know, that just sounded like a cute idea mm -hmm. that a three, four-year-old would come up with. A singing nurse. A singing nurse. 
Yes. Okay, so you already knew what you you already knew your path. <laughs> this the, the I I believe that the child version always knows. Mm -hmm. I believe that that is the essence of who I am, and I yes. feel like my four year old self is the key to my well being mm. always. Your inner child was on it. On it. She was wise, she, she was in tune, she was empathetic, she was connected. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, life comes along and it takes you through these paths and you, yes. you're doing your best to learn along the way. And, you know, that, that particular moment when I did that song, I was in an unhealthy relationship that was very tumultuous back and forth. And, you know, I, I had convinced myself that there was a certain amount of pain, I guess, you had to go through to get to the, the glorious part of a relationship. And, um, and I was with someone who just wasn't mm -hmm. operating at high frequency, that wasn't okay. valuing me, that really mm -hmm. didn't want the same things that I did, I think, at that time. Okay. And, you know, you, you, you just think that you, you think that life, you know, I was in my, I was in my early 20s, and I, I yes. remember being like, you think that um, there's this clock ticking. So you feel like at the first glimmer of something that looks prospective, like that must be the thing you have to follow. At least I did mm -hmm. at that time. And um, I well, did What was it about that. him? What was it about him that attracted you to him? Um, we were of the same, we were of the same cultural background. Okay. He was charming, he was charismatic, he was, okay. he was established. Um, he, was, he was kind, he was a kind person. We had a lot of fun together. But there was a certain, we were at different maturity levels. Okay. We were, at one, that, was, that was what it was. We were at different maturity levels. I was very settled with being around energy that um, inspired and preserved my energy. And he still wanted to be out partying. And he had friends who were not also in the same space as I was. Mm -hmm. So we were just at different maturity levels. Okay. And, um, and shortly after that, once, you know, once I, once I basically, outgrew that relationship yes and i my career began and i started traveling and i shared this on my instagram the other day because the purple heart is my is my symbol mm -hmm. it's like my logo yeah. and um i remember i went on tour and i came back and i realized i was like i'm not the same person anymore mm -hmm. and so i can't continue to hold on to old habits if i yeah. want to progress in a new version of myself and so mm -hmm. that became the shift of how i outgrew my old former self of that time the things mm -hmm. that i had put expectations the pressures i had put on myself mm -hmm. the pressures i had probably put on him to be something mm -hmm. he wasn't ready to be yeah. and um and that was it i had to go and i grew and life continued mm -hmm. and yeah it, it blossomed for me in such a wonderful way well, it's just interesting because it killed me. I mean, sometimes we hold on to something, even if it kills us. Mm. Even if we've outgrown it, we just find a way. Let me just hold on it one more time. Let me just go in one more round. Let me go one more situation. And it's a point where you're going to have to just literally let go. It feels like a death. Yes. Right? Even yes. though you know that you have to go forward, you have to grow now, you have to expand it already. You grow out of it, and it's like, oh, this is going to kill me, but I have to let it go anyway. Yes. Well, it's not going to kill you. Actually, it's going to liberate you. It's going to grow you. It's going to heal you. And it takes courage. Yes. Heart, With love, hands, courage. Here the purple go. heart. Exactly. Love, courage to move forward on your journey. And in this heartfelt time, when people are frightened, they're frightened, they don't know what to do, they don't know how to do it. You look in radio, by the way. Thank you. you, look, you I feel you're doing your work. What are you doing during this pandemic period that's actually energizing you to this level and keeping you lifted and going forward? What are you doing that you can share with others that they can also heal themselves through? Well, something I'm currently doing right now is I'm currently on a 21-day detox. Okay, let's say no more. Okay. <laughs> Clap that up. Yes. Number one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's really been wonderful because I decided to start it at the beginning of September because I knew that these last four months of the year wow. were going to be crucial, I think, in establishing the mindset needed to push through. 
Mm. And, and, and I know that that all start, I, you know, we all know and believe, especially I do, that the work really starts in or always. Yeah. And so from a physical standpoint, I wanted to put health as my priority. So I have been completely vegan for the last two weeks. Right. Um, started taking herbs to replenish and cleanse my blood and my right. organs. So mm -hmm. I've been feeling really energized in that way. So I would say to anyone out there, really take a look at your health. Mm. and really start there because I, I truly feel that your body responds to whatever you give it. And so Absolutely. that includes food, that includes social media, that mm. includes people, that includes environments and, and um, expectations in which you've allowed yourself to be a part of. And I think that you have to really take inventory with how your body responds. Mm. And so in this time, you know, it, it's a lot going on. And so you really have to be protective. And so um, one of the things that I really hold true to is belief. Um, and belief being that everything is working for the greater good, even yes. when it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so right now, I believe that we've been given great opportunity mm -hmm. in yes. dismantle, in disruption, in discomfort. Yes. Yes. to really to really establish how we want the next 20 30 40 50 years of our lives to look like mm -hmm. um and i think that that's a beautiful opportunity of empowerment yes um you know and so i i definitely have been going within self and really asking myself what is essential to me and really putting that as the priority of my life. And so mm. being a mother, being a partner, you know, not being able to see my family for a certain amount of time. These are the things that now come back into focus. Yes. These are the things that really have become, um, you know, priority for me is how can I invest and create more time within these essential things in my life so that moving forward, whatever the world should look like, that I still feel whole wherever I am. Mm. And so, you know, that involves lots of daily practices that involves um, being creative and allowing myself to be um, to be free to like explore new talents. And, you know, you were talking about the the protector with the wingspan. Like I've been yes. using this metaphor for myself as far as my wingspan is expansive and I should Wonderful. be looking at every feather on that wing mm. to see what is within me in this time. Yes. yes. And, um, and so I would encourage everyone to really try to put your health as a priority, protect your peace as a priority, as far as, um, you know, the uncertainty can be very, very difficult. But yeah. I feel like if you hold true to what is certain and all that is certain is what you are in control of within self. Mm. And so do your best to just really hold on to that and really try to empower yourself in this time with knowledge, mm -hmm. with, um, with, with, creati with creativity, with health, um, mm -hmm. and with love. Because mm -hmm. I really feel like that is what is required for everything to progress and move forward as a whole. That is extremely powerful. You're taking it on. And so where do you go now? This wellness now expansive, the heart healing, bringing your family with you on this journey. Where does where your music go in this time? Because everything is changing. Okay? Life will never be the same. I will say it's going to be better. It's up, it's up to us. I would say that the people, the power is in the people. And yes. we must activate our inner power, our innate power yes. to shift, to make the reality, our reality, which is my most positive. So within that, Where's your music going to go? Where's your life going now? Give us an update of what we can look forward to. So I truly believe that in this last time and in really evaluating what is priority and what is essential, my mm -hmm. happiness is essential to me. And mm -hmm. the thing that I know I feel most energized by is by connecting with people through healing and through inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so... In the last few years, as things have shifted in my career for a multitude of reasons, mm -hmm. um, it's really forced me to really find and use my voice in different ways. Oh, right. And so that has allowed me to not just be a vessel for music, but it has also allowed me to be a vessel for word and mm -hmm. speaking and sharing and inspiring. And so 
Um, you know, there will be literary works, there will yeah. be there will be healing albums, mm. there will be, mm. um, you know, there will continue to be this dialogue as often as I can connect with my online community, especially in this time, because there are no stages at the moment for me to be able to get on and sing with people, which is really truly where I love to connect. Mm. Um, being on stage for me is my therapy um, because I love being the singing nurse. I love, mm singing these songs and speaking mm -hmm. about the feeling and the intention and the lesson that has been learned. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. It's, it's really beautiful to be able for me to do that. So currently, I love being able to connect with my fans online and with my community online. And so these types of dialogues, doing these conversations, having these conversations, sharing what my experiences in motherhood, wellness and music have been, Yes. is my drive. That is the intersection where I feel all of my passions will grow moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, those are the things that really changed my life, music, motherhood, and, and wellness. And so mm -hmm. in all of those areas, I am expanding and flying my largest wingspan. And that's what the second, that's what act two, I feel like, looks okay. like for me. Mm -hmm. Well, as you were talking, I would say my the creator has a master plan. The music came out in 1969 with Farrah Sanders. And I've been asking about this plan. And I know that I have a part of the plan for our liberation, our healing, our transformation, for global healing. You just expressed your plan. Your plan is our plan. So we put our divine plans together. The whole world has shifted. My girlfriend says to me, that's the sense. The whole world has gone holistic. Yes. Wholeness. Just Whole. about wholeness in body, mind, spirit, and relationships. And your mesh connect, your work, your purpose. That's being whole woman. So we have so much to look forward to. I thank you for giving us the medicine. Come on, healing nurse artist, little girl. Thank you, woman, queen. Wise woman. Thank we bless you. you. We thank you. And we will wrap our wings around you to know that you are safe in our global community of wellness. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for your blessings. Blessings to you as well. I'm blessings saying you everyone. all Thank day you long. So much. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We will hear about you today. Yes. Thank you. Much love. Thank you. A long time coming. Yes. Wow, this is so good for us to be together. I'm so happy. Me too. Thank I'm happy you. for you. I'm happy for us. I'm happy for the sisterhood and the empowerment work and the crown work that you've done to help women to restore their dignity and their healing. Give thanks and praise. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, you've just gone through a medicine. And it's, you know, today Spirit gave me to speak on the heart, which is in our comedic teachings, African spirituality, it's my eye. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my eye has from the heart she not only has wings that she can fly with, but she also is on the scale. We are on the scale of my eye every day. Mm -hmm. On one side is our heart, and the other side, which are relationships, the other side is a feather. So we're constantly balancing ourselves out in order to stay in my eye. Yes. Share yes. your story, share your transformation, share your heart healing, your balance. Because it all from the heart comes the breast, comes mm -hmm. the communication, comes the thoughts, mm -hmm. comes our healing. So do yes. you bring the healing. Share your story. <laughs> share who you are, share your story. Just talk how you feel. Wow. You know, there's been so many stories. Yes. There's so many paths. There's so many. Can you hear me well? Absolutely. Okay, so which which part of the story? Oh, I can well, go many know, places with this. Let's story. start with this. Let's start with the crown, your crown work. So they can some of you know you they know you from back and that as that strong entrepreneur. I knew you did. They did a piece on you in the New York Times about what you did for women with cancer and your crowns for their self esteem. I, so that's yeah. that's the work that I was I became familiar with. And then, of course, in the industry of your great artists, you have developed their crowns for them. And you had a business in Manhattan 
you know, lower Manhattan. Oh. You just, you had that going on. And then you made a transformation. Then you made a transformation <laughs> into empowerment and women. So, and then you went to another level of transformation because I was with you, a process with you. It was about your breasts, your heart. This is, there's a whole world there. It's a book, you know, I look at it as chapters. There's, I, yes. Those three chapters I'm familiar with. We walk together in those chapters. So you can come yes, so at any point of those chapters and <laughs> say your lesson. What lesson did you learn? Yes. I stretch up to the most high but tell you and something. take us with you. What lesson, as you went from one chapter of enlightenment, today is the day of Ra, uh, Sunday, in your enlightenment journey, it brought you to this moment right now. Well, I would say, I, I'll take it back to when I worked in the, the entertainment industry. Yes. Worked with them. Worked with, um, one enemy, Wendy Williams, on the Wendy Williams show. That's a big part of what people know. Why? Yes. Yeah. A lot of people know me for that. And um, actually, you know, creating all of her facts. You know, her coming out. And then I've worked in so many magazines, so many different celebrities, all through known as the Emmy Award winning celebrity hair designer, designer. Um, yeah. I've been featured in the New York Times and started to, the work started to shift from just, you know, creating celebrity, working with people who were losing their hair mm. in chemotherapy, alopecia, people. And um, with that shift, yeah, I realized that it was, it was, much, it was so many levels of healing. That was a lesson for me that healing just one way. And so, you know, I, I put my healing practices into those crowns, you yes. know, that's the crown of the head, the crown mm -hmm. that we're receiving all of the energy. I started to feel um, like it was time to come out of the closet. And so when I say in the closet, mm -hmm. meaning the image that I had to present for myself during those years, image, when you're in the, when you're in the, the, the limelight like that, not only working with the celebrities, but working with people, um, mm -hmm. you have your time to feature in these publications, there's high expectations of you. And so with those expectations, you find yourself putting on the image, having to show up mm. what people expect from you. Not okay. Adia, Adia, not you're breaking, Adia, you're Adia, breaking you're up. you're breaking up a little bit. I am? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's better now. That's good. Okay, that's better. So let me hold it. Maybe it's because I put it down. Is that much better? Yeah, that's much better. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so did you all hear what I just said about yes, the heard it. Yep. But it was okay. a little bit, but we're keeping up. Go ahead. Okay. Keep going. Right. We're not breaking up anymore. Not no. Okay, good. And so, you know, there was a high there was a, a big level of expectation and um that that put a lot of pressure pressure on my image on how I had to mm. present myself. Okay. And so, and so what I did is I started to um, just, you know, go deeper into my own healing work. And I didn't mind, I didn't mind um, becoming who I truly was in the public, like becoming mainstream with it, sharing my, my authentic self. And I took time to really do that, you know, coming mm. from like, you know, fully fabulous, meaning Fabulous and, and but mainstream see as fabulous. You know, the red bottom shoes, the full fabulous attire, always full makeup, full hair, this whole image that people knew me as. And and honestly, that's part of who I was, but that's not deeply that's not all of who I was, but that's who I showed up. That's who I showed up as because that's what I felt like I was expected to. And that was really, that was really challenging for me. That the biggest lesson there was um was to um to be my authentic self and that took time and mm -hmm. the way i had to do that was to start to remove the layers to start mm -hmm. feeling layers and um start to get to know myself so mm -hmm. that was that part of that journey was um the journey of self discovery and there was a time where yes i i owned the fabulous shops and you know the money was flowing really well i had shops in manhattan one of the high, most highest in areas i did all of that but um i wasn't happy inside i wasn't mm -hmm. fulfilled inside because i felt like 
I wasn't fully showing up as who I really am. Mm -hmm. This was important for me. So you know what I did for a part of the, the journey? Because there's many stories in between, but I'm going to skip past it because our time is limited. I left it all. I packed up one day. I started doing more work with women, sharing mm -hmm. real work, you know, um, so the, the clientele, the, the healing, the, the beauty community started to transfer over into the healing community. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. started something called the Goddess Glow Up and, you know, s s gathering with women. Mm -hmm. And that, I found that there was so much healing that took place when we started to be honest and share mm -hmm. our stories, share it through yeah. our dance, you know, share it through um, the knowledge that had to share with one another and I, I felt this passion for it and I started to go deeper into it to the point where I was saying, okay the real mm -hmm. journey is getting to know thyself that's yes. really how do we get to know thyself I left mm -hmm. I left all of it I decided to close the shop I decided to get up and move to LA mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I remember and, we had that talk right before you were leaving right in I, Brooklyn you was on yeah, your way I, mm -hmm. I bought I bought a house Rented mm -hmm. it out, bought it in one year. The next year, mm -hmm. I was gone, moved, packed up everything, took my daughter, moved to LA. And it wasn't because I was expecting this big life in LA. It was because I was trying to get out of my natural, my normal, my normal mm -hmm. life. So come out could, the box, come out the box. Mm -hmm. So I could see one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was a journey. Mm -hmm. That was a real healing because what happened was it was a journey and adventure with my. Yeah. And that was the hardest venture that I've ever had was to take mm -hmm. an adventure with myself. To what really... was hard about it? What was hard about it? Well, you know, um, to see the dark side, mm -hmm. to see the, the shadow side, mm -hmm. to, to see things that I didn't want to see, to, 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 to see my reflection show up to me in so many different ways through so many different people, mm -hmm. to see it constantly happen over and over again. And I, had, I was forced to mm -hmm. see the truth. To look within. To look within. Mm -hmm. And so in LA, people would look at living in LA like everything is always this fabulous story, but it's not. A lot mm -hmm. of the time you're spent with yourself. You're spent with nature because it's not mm -hmm. like living in where everything is just, it's always in your face. You know, mm -hmm. we're spread out. You know, people are not in the streets. Everyone's doing their own thing. What happens then? You have to look at yourself. And I've started to wear my natural hair. You know, mm -hmm. there was no reason that to walk around with all of this extraness because I didn't have anybody to perform for. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like my whole life before was a performance. I didn't have anyone to perform for anymore. Mm. All I had to do was take care of me, mm. you know? And, and let me tell you something, that all the childhood wounds started to show up. Okay. You know, like, issues I dealt like with. What, what, what issue that showed up for you that was like the core of everything else that was happening? in your process of transformation? Um, I, what I believe that was, was um, father issues. Okay. Issue of, uh, part of it was father, but like, um, uh, I realized that I, I was really wounded when my parents separated. Mm -hmm. And when my parents se separated as a really young age, I found myself seeking that love um, from men, I found mm -hmm. looking for the love of my father through men all the yes. time, and that was really very painful. Mm -hmm. Because when you start to see the same the same thing happen in different situations, and you can a certain way, or being for me, I would be honest with you because I'm people know me being very honest and straightforward and real talk, and part of my real talk is to say, look. Why am I overly sexual? What's this overly sexual image? About? What is that about? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is this? What is this need for all of this attention? What is all of this about? Mm -hmm. I felt like that, and that's not the, the truth. The truth is, is that when I was younger, I felt like I had enough attention. When I was younger, I felt like I was teased all the time. You know, um, and so I was wounded from some, from certain pains in childhood that felt abandoned that felt discarded, that felt like not enough. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that, that show up a lot of times maybe through the work that we do or maybe through the, yes. the, the, the peeling away, the peeling away. Since, you know, going into 
the wellness community with the beauty because it's all the wellness. Mm -hmm. It's inner beauty, it's outer beauty, it's inner outer wellness. So as you went through your process, it went right into your heart. And it de deepened into your heart and then it moved into your breast. Ooh. That's the symbol of the mother, the symbol of the ultimate healer, the ultimate nurturer is the mother. The ultimate healer is the melanin woman. Yes. So give us the story of your breast, your heart transformation that brings Ooh. you to where you are now. Let me tell you about these breasts. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've had many stories about this. Me, you and I have been together and I've been in videos with you and you know, I'm, I'm, the breast is popping out of all of my clothing all the time. And we would make <laughs> jokes about it on some of the videos we would take. And I'd be like, yes, look at these. And, you know, I would make jokes about the boobies all the time. And you know, let me tell you something about these breasts. I got those, I, I got breast implants mm -hmm. when I was um, 28 years old, okay. 28 years old. I was in the, I was in the industry and okay. in the industry, it was the thing to do. It was, mm -hmm. it was just like getting your nails. Get a makeup job. It was get get breasts. Come on. Yeah. Get some breasts. It was a normal conversation. And, mm -hmm. it, and in that time, people, everyone was doing like nowadays they're doing all kinds of things, but in those times the breast was the thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. and um, in the industry, you always get work done. That's just what it was, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, for me, you know, I, I, I didn't have a problem with my breast before breastfeeding okay. children. So I breastfed children, and mm -hmm. I breastfed three children, mm -hmm. all three of them. And I was mm -hmm. father at the time, at age twenty. I was with him from age sixteen to twenty-eight, and mm -hmm. you know. Let me tell you, I, when I, my, you know, the thought process was at that time, not only, mm -hmm. but uh, the thought process was, okay, well, he done, took, he done took something away from me, he done put the breast back to, I'm gonna put it back together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the mindset at that time was, yes. I'm starting a new life. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a new life, I'm gonna find a new man, mm -hmm. and I'm getting some new breasts. New breasts, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, I am 41 years old now, going on age right. 42. I was 28 years yes. old then. Mm -hmm. the, it's two different mindsets. Absolutely. And, and a part of that mindset was, I need these breasts so that I can feel whole again. Mm -hmm. Because there was something that I felt that was taken away from me mm -hmm. through motherhood at mm -hmm. the time yeah. and through also divorce. Yes. Those two things made yeah. me feel like I needed to recover. I need to put back what was taken away from me. And mm -hmm. so um, I got those breast implants. And let me tell you, I look in the mirror. And I, when I, the first day I came home with them, I looked in the mirror. Two things happened. What happened? I cried. Mm -hmm. What I made you cry? Because they were so big. And I just... I looked all of a sudden, I, I felt like I aged. I aged immediately, like 10 to 15 years. Whoa. I was 28 years old. All of a sudden, you know, I felt like, because now I wasn't used to having all those big old breasts. I was a size B cup at the time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had these breasts and I was like, oh my goodness, what do you do? You know, I was an athletic person. I was working out. I was training. Oh, yeah. And I had a great muscular shape and mm -hmm. automatically it took it away from immediately because now it was a size it was a double d cup and they filled up so much space but not mm. only that i was just like oh my gosh i'm this girl now now i'm her mm. right that's one second second was that i couldn't breathe i walked down the street the first day with those breast implants to, I'm walking towards the subway and about a 15 minute walk and let me tell you i felt like running like 10 minutes. i could not breathe because those implants were all in my chest Oh, they were all in the rib cage, everywhere. Okay. And so, okay. you know, um, you know what happened though? I didn't mm. see it as I had an option. I didn't see it as a way out. I didn't right. see that I could take them out or anything. You just like had that. to suffer through it. I have to do this. Everyone is I doing mean, it. This is the norm. I got. I feel like I'm recovering from all what I've been through with having a mate and that ended and carrying the children and the breath. 
it was a lot. So you just felt like this is it. I felt like I was trapped in my body. That's what I felt like. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you also, I said, well, if I got these breaths, I'm gonna work. You better believe I'm gonna work this. If I got them, I'm gonna work this. This is how much this cost me? Oh, I'm gonna work mm. breath. And let me tell you, that's what I did. I became a And now I'm, I'm this whole character, but deep down inside, still that little girl trying to heal herself. Yes. Okay? Yes. But but I, also I played the character. And you know what? You know, when that when that when it was time to unpeel but and unpeel those layers. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, it started to come to me and okay, you know, I started to feel not mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling my vibrant, youthful, you know, as the years went by, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was looking at these breasts and, you know, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not feeling, I can't breathe. I used to be mm -hmm. able to, I couldn't sing much because the airways were because of those breasts. Okay. You know? and I, mm -hmm. I and no one really talks about that. Did anyone tell you about some of the issues that could come as a result? No. I went, I finally, as I started peeling back those layers yes. and getting becoming more attracted to natural bodies, natural healing, natural ways. And mm. I'm healthy. You know that because I've taken yes. the products, you know. Exactly. But it didn't matter if I was eating healthy. Because of those breasts, those breasts were still, it was a toxic inside. So I would get depressed for no reason. I didn't understand what the depression, I was getting skin rashes. My feet were swelling, all types mm -hmm. of things were happening. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand where it was coming from. So I started discovering this thing called breast implant illness. And mm -hmm. I discovered that, I discovered it. My heart rate was mm -hmm. because your heart. I, I it knew that. your I knew heart, I, your lungs, your wings spread. Now, now that you have, you, when did you go through the surgical procedure to release them? My um, anniversary, which will be celebrated, is, mm -hmm. is um, November 18th of 2019. So yes. it's, it's not even been a year yet. It's almost one year. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I will be celebrating that. I, but let me, but that, that the mm -hmm. process of, I would like to share the strength to get into that place to remove them was a yes. very difficult thing. Right like, there. What, what? How did you, what you go through in that, that process of removing them? Psychologically, Shame. how people responded to you. That right there. Honey, I was, all I was thinking of, what are people going to look at me? How are people going to see me? What, are, what right. is the, people know me for this, this. Body. Back to that. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. would they look at me now? I've been mm -hmm. talking all this wellness stuff which I have been living. Yes, but, that's it. That's a part of the wellness. It's the it's healing a, process. I was worried about my image. What mm. about, I'm not going to speak to people with, and I didn't know what was going to happen after surgery. I didn't know how they were going to look. And all of a sudden, I'm always in these low-cut browsers, boobs popping out all the time. And then I come online, like, oh, so you're, you've been living a lie this whole time. Oh, this is, you know, all of these thoughts. In my head, and these are the kind of thoughts that kept me with these, mm. with those breasts for so long. Because... Okay of being as my authentic self, not because of the image, but of what people would think about me. Mm. And that was pain. And how I do it, I just said, I have nothing to lose, so much to gain. Yes. Nothing to lose, but everything. Everything to gain. gain. Because that's why I put my glasses on. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> what am I seeing? It wasn't just on the outer plane. It was <laughs> on the inner plane. So I had to get a close look to the spirit. And that's called freedom. Freedom, honey. It's freedom called to be your full self. But that was a part of the transformation. You know, we're called, no matter where we are right now, there's more to come. There's more layers to take off and peel off and go through and cry through. But the sun always comes back up again. Yes. You know, and you go through those dark places to actually meet your new self and let go of those layers and then continue to evolve. So in your process of healing mm -hmm. and taking us through the healing, because you, you took us all through it. I love that. That's called courage. Broad daylight, look at me, because it's you too. Because no one can point the finger because we all have something we have to transform through if we have the strength. And you did have the strength to do that transformation. Where are you now in this process of healing? <laughs> well, um, I feel so free. I am, I am so free, and mm -hmm. and you know I am so thankful 
-hmm. for, the, for this journey because mm -hmm. it, it has given me a new life. Yes. And it gives so much hope for so many, for so yes. many who are ashamed of all, all of their different stages, you know, because you sometimes you're judged for who you were before. Mm -hmm. And some people want to hold on to that. Lock you in the box. Lock mm -hmm. you in the box and say, oh, that's yes. that girl. That's, that's who you are forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. So right? Indeed, right. Yeah. So you I said, no, no, I'm more. I'm more. I'm more. And, and, and so what I'm doing now, um, you know, my platform has changed. So many different things. My voice has changed. My courage has changed. You know, for me, it's just it's just pure, raw realness. Well, and what about it, your breathing? You can breathe now. How does that feel? How does that impact you? The breath is life. Let's all take a few deep breaths with you. Give us a few deep breaths with you of the new life and the recovery. Come on, take a seat. <sighs> it feels yes. like that. It feels yes. like a real release. And you know what I'm doing now with the breath? I'm starting to to start singing again oh singing my mantras using oh. my voice and and you know i felt like my throat chakra was blocked as well yeah and so some I, i'm doing sound healing and i'm not using my voice as i used to use it before mm -hmm. because how does my voice sound now i have mm -hmm. to train it again to get used to it again That's get to nice. know her again you know, and then so so part of using the voice now because the voice is connected with the lungs and the, and the breath, and and part of using that is by sharing the truth, sharing your stories, being being brave to share a story, and then you know how many others you set free. I, you know what I mean. Like for me, that's the true healing is freedom, is the freedom to to show up as your imperfect self because we're not we're not perfect none of us and we all have a story we all have a journey so um i believe that sometimes we get stuck that's all we get stuck i felt like i was stuck in those implants like the implants had me stuck it was i mean the weight of them i couldn't i was held down literally physically but no more but no more no more. so what do you do when you have been set free i become like harriet tubman mm-hmm I set my yes. people free. Yes. Now you have a mission. And so this is what it is for me now. My life is driven by the mission of getting people unstuck. Yes. In many, in many ways. Through your story. And yes. there's me in your story. The mm -hmm. rest is a symbol of everyone's story of what we hold on to. Mm -hmm. Because we think there's no other way out. There's no other way through. Mm -hmm. We don't know what else to do. How are people going to respond to us? what kind of life we're going to have if we do this or that, but it's to have the courage to go forward anyway and to trust that feminine principle, that God in you, mm. as Mary Mary says, to trust her and go forward anyway. Mm. I am so proud of you. I am so charged by your spirit. Congratulations. You got your wings. And now you can truly fly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all my subscribers. We are giving away a free seven day detox kit when we reach our milestone goal of 50,000 subscribers to this channel. To enter for your chance to win, all you have to do is subscribe to our channel, like and comment on this video, and we will choose the winner from the comments section. Thank you for growing with us, Ashe.